The Savage Mind, 1962, by Claude Levi Strauss, is a seminal work in structural anthropology, wherein the author explores the processes of human thought across different cultures, particularly as it pertains to what he calls wild or primitive thought. Levi Strauss's aim is to demonstrate that the intellectual processes of so called primitives are equally as complex and sophisticated as those of civilized people. The book begins by critiquing the idea that the human mind has evolved from a simpler, primitive state to a more complex, civilized one. Levi Strauss argues against the ethnocentric view that non Western societies are inferior or less developed, emphasizing that all human societies demonstrate an intricate and ordered understanding of the world. He introduces the concept of bricolage to explain the intellectual process of savage or mythical thought. Bricolage refers to the creation or construction from a diverse range of things that happen to be available, or the act of improvisation by a bricoleur, someone who works with his hands, utilizing pre-existing tools and materials. In contrast to the engineer who seeks new solutions and materials for each new project, the bricoleur relies on repurposing existing objects and ideas. Levi Strauss argues that the savage mind operates on modes similar to the bricoleur. By organizing the world through a set of structures derived from the natural and social environment. This contrasts with the scientific mind, which seeks to transcend these structures through the creation of abstract categories and theories. For primitive thought, objects and concepts are not inert. They have a life and history that imbue them with meaning within a particular cultural context. Levi Strauss suggests that through myth and totemic systems, so called primitive peoples categorize the world around them, creating a rich tapestry of cultural symbols. The author addresses the structure of myths, positing that they operate according to a set of universal laws. These myths serve as a means to make sense of the world, to reconcile contradictions, and to express the underlying structures of society. He analyzes the structural relationships within myths, identifying recurrent patterns and binary oppositions, such as life and death, raw and cooked, or nature and culture. These oppositions form the basis for a universal language of human thought, which transcends the specific content of any single myth. Levi Strauss proposes that the structure of myths is not linear, but rather that they can be broken down into constituent units called mythemes. By comparing different myths, one can identify the common mythemes and the rules by which they are combined. This structural analysis of myths reveals that different stories may appear dissimilar on the surface, but share underlying similarities at the level of their deepest structure. Throughout the book, Levi Strauss examines totemism, arguing that it does not represent a primitive form of religion, as many anthropologists of his time believed. Instead, he views totemism as a logical system for classifying the natural and social world. The totemic classifications provide a system of order and continuity for the societies that use them, enabling people to impart significance to their experiences. Levi Strauss also refutes the idea that the savage mind is concerned solely with practical or utilitarian functions. He contends that the thirst for knowledge and understanding is a fundamental human trait that transcends the boundaries between primitive and civilized. The creation of art and the practice of religion in traditional societies are not simply functional, but are also expressions of a search for meaning and order. In addition, Levi Strauss argues that the distinction between science and magic is not as clear-cut as traditionally thought. Both are attempts at understanding and controlling the world by decoding its underlying structures. While science may use empirical methods and seek to establish universal laws, both science and magic operate within a specific cultural and intellectual framework. The book's exploration culminates in a discussion of how the structural approach can illuminate the human sciences. Levi Strauss advocates for a method of understanding human behavior and culture that recognizes the intricate structures that underpin them. He emphasizes that, in order to comprehend other cultures and our own, we must appreciate the intellectual achievements of all forms of human thought and recognize the deep structures that are common to the human mind. In The Savage Mind, Levi Strauss offers a profound and revolutionary perspective on human cognition and cultural expression. 
He challenges prevailing assumptions about the evolution of thought and the superiority of Western scientific approaches. Through meticulous analysis of myths, totemism, and the very processes by which humans understand their world, Levi-Strauss argues for the universal and intricate nature of the human mind. His ideas have had far-reaching implications, not just for anthropology, but for all the human sciences, encouraging a greater recognition of the complexity and sophistication of all human cultures. Claude Levi-Strauss's work has paved the way for a greater understanding of the human capacity for creating and organizing knowledge, challenging the notion that there is a fundamental difference in mental capacity between so-called civilized and primitive minds. His structural approach has been influential across diverse fields, including anthropology, mythology, linguistics, and philosophy. By analyzing the savage mind through the lens of structure rather than content, Levi-Strauss has shifted the way we think about culture, cognition, and the very nature of human thought.